guys, I have something really exciting to share today. Craig just announced their latest series of pocket hole jigs, the 500 and the 700 series. I've got the 720 right here and we are going to dive into everything about it, what's in the box, what it can do, how to use it, and the accessories that you can use with it. Let's get started. Now, Craig is obsoleting their K4 and K5 series. So if you have one of those older jigs, I do have a complete video tutorial and I will link to that in the description below. I also have a tutorial for the Craig 320 and I will link to that as well. Now I have the pro package of the 720, which means that it comes with a few extra accessories and I will tell you all about it. But let's look at what's in the box. Now here's what's in the box. We've got a set of screws in the most commonly used sizes. We've got a vacuum hose adapter. We've got the vacuum blade. And then of course we have the jig itself. Down here, we've got the drill and the driver bits. And since this is the pro package, it also comes with the docking station support rings. And we will get into all the details about that as well. Now let's talk about this jig. The best part about this jig is that you don't have to set the material thickness on the jig at all. It's got this automax clamp. So when you move the clamp down, it automatically moves the jig height and adjusts for the material thickness. It can go from a half inch to one and a half inches. It has an anti-slip pad right here. So it holds the material stable as you're drilling the pocket hole so it doesn't move. It also has a tension adjustment knob here. So if you are clamping your material and you find that it isn't clamped tight enough, you can adjust your tension right there. Let me show this to you in action. This is a three quarter inch board. So I'm gonna place that right there. I'm gonna push down on my Automax clamp and just press it all the way down till it clamps and we are ready to make pocket holes right here. On the other hand, this is an inch and a half board. I'm gonna place that in there and then go ahead and clamp it down. And we can make the holes for the inch and a half pocket holes. Also, it has onboard tool storage, so you can store all your bits in here so you're not losing them or looking for them. It's got a port right here where you can insert your vacuum blade so it can vacuum away the chips as you're making your holes. And then you can use the vacuum adapter if you need to to connect this to your shop vacuum. And then it does have these material support wings that you can pull out as needed. So you can support wider material if you need. Plus, if you want to attach it to a workbench, you do have a hole on each side here that you can use to screw this into your workbench. Now let's quickly chat about the docking station support wings, which are a part of the pro package. So these wings are actually also storage boxes so you could store your screws in here or your bits etc the pro package the docking station actually comes with a few other things this is a jig clamp so you can use this clamp to clamp your pocket hole jig to the workbench and then we've got this docking station this is what helps us attach these guys onto the jig and then here we have the adjustable stop and i will show you that in just a minute to attach the docking station i am simply going to insert this down here and slide it into place same on the other side i'm gonna go ahead and insert it and slide over now the material support wings simply snap into place right here now when you're attaching these you want to make sure that uh, 
the gray knob right here is on this side because that's what's going to keep it folded up when you're not using it. So we're gonna go ahead and snap this into place. Then you can simply fold it up, rotate this to keep it in place for storage. The docking station support wings also come with an adjustable stop, which basically is meant for if you are making multiple pocket holes in very similar boards, you want the pocket holes to be evenly placed, you can use this as a stop while you're making your pocket holes. Now, when Ever you are making pocket holes the first thing you want to do is measure the thickness of your board this is three quarter inches but to be completely completely sure we can use the material thickness gauge that comes with the jig to figure out the exact thickness of the board now you don't need the material thickness to set up your jig but what you do need it for is to set up your drill bit. Now this is an easy set drill bit, which means that it already has markings for half inch, three quarter inch, and one and a half inches. So all you do is loosen the bit collar and move it so that you have the window in the bit collar set at three quarter inches and tighten. And then you can just clamp your board in here and drill your pocket hole. Load the bit in the drill, attach the vacuum hose, and drill the pocket holes. Switching out the material thickness is easy. Simply swap out your workpiece Switch the setting on the drill bit depth collar and drill the holes. Now I've got my pocket holes done, so I'm gonna quickly show you how to attach them. I'm actually building a drawer, so I am going to be attaching it at a right angle. But you could also attach them as a butt joint like that, or you could attach them as a face joint where you would clamp them and you would have pocket holes going that way. To attach the boards using pocket holes, use wood glue for strong joints and use clamps to keep the boards stable while you join them. I like using the face clamp and the right angle clamp depending on the situation. Use the square drive bit to drive the correct size of screw and join the boards. Now, if you do have material that is not one of these thicknesses, the back of the jig also has markings that you can use to set the material thickness for some of the other commonly available thicknesses. Setting one of these thicknesses is very simple. All you wanna do is insert the bit into the holder right here. Notice that the tip of the bit goes right into that hole and then we snap it into place. Now we can use the wrench and loosen the bit collar. Now say we have a 5 8 inch material, so we were going to drop the collar and align it with the 5 8 inch line and tighten. And we are ready to make pocket holes in 5 8 inch material. Now if you have longer boards, you can use these material support wings on the docking station to support your boards while you make the pocket holes. I mean, really, you could use really long boards and make pocket holes very easily. Now, if you don't have the material support wings with the docking station that come with the Pro Package, you can simply use the material support wings that are a part of the 720. It isn't as wide as a span as you get with the docking station, but it is definitely useful. Now for the coolest feature of this jig. You can use this jig in this configuration, or if you have a large piece of plywood or a large board, you can turn it around and clamp horizontally 
on your workpiece. You can clamp this in this configuration to the workbench and then you can use a big sheet of plywood, put it in there. You can use the support wing for support and clamp it to make your pocket holes. So that is the Craig 720. I think there are two things about this jig that I really, really love. One, of course, the fact that you don't have to bother setting the material thickness on here, that it automatically adjusts that. And second is being able to use it on its side. Now, Craig has also released a couple other accessories to go along with it. One of them is a micro drill guide, which is essentially uh, a drill guide that makes 25% smaller holes. So you can use this for half inch stock or narrower material or even like dense hardwood. So you can easily switch out this drill guide for the micro drill guide. And it comes with its own drill bit because it's a narrow drill bit, but this is also an easy set drill bit. And they also have a plug cutter attachment, which you can use to cut out custom plugs for your project. It swaps out with the drill guide and you can drill plugs using the special cutting bit. Cut off the excess using a jigsaw, circular saw or bandsaw and you have pocket hole plugs. which is great because you can match them to the wood species you are using because we all love to build using pocket holes, but we'd rather not see them in our finished projects. I hope you found this video on how to use the Craig 720 helpful. In fact, I have a whole bunch of resources on pocket holes, how to use them in various situations, including a bunch of projects on my website. And I will add a link to that in the description below. And now here are a bunch of projects that you can build with your Craig jig.